Before I introduce our, our next uh, speaker, just a reminder that after the, the next two uh, sessions, uh, we have uh, Q&A and discussion periods, so please do uh, note down your questions for all four of our speakers and save them until that session. Um, and we'll let it run uh, as long as it needs to run, but we will finish at 11.30 and break for lunch. Uh, our next speaker um, is Kamilia Dimitrova. Uh, she attended PTSS in 11.3, back in the Nick Pratt era. Um, she is uh, a member of the Bulgarian Diplomatic Service. Um, since 2009, she has been working at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, firstly at NATO and Regional Security Directorate, and now at the EU Common Foreign and Security Policy Directorate. Uh, she's a key diplomat dealing with issues like EU sanctions, policies against third countries, um, entities and persons, and in the present context, I think, uh, very relevant that you're talking to us today. Camilia, floor is yours. see how it's working. So, distinguished guests and colleagues, dear friends, for me, it's an honor to be here as a PTSS alumnus and a speaker to this conference discussing the perspectives on countering foreign terrorist fighters phenomenon. First of all, I would emphasize that Bulgaria strongly condemns any form of terrorism. We, as a nation, Bulgarian government, me personally, as a government official, we expressed our deep indignation at the terrorist attacks in across Paris to last Friday. Dear organizers, thanks a lot to invite me as a speaker and particularly to give such opportunity to young professionals with different backgrounds, including diplomacy, and to promote the gender balance and the role of women in peace and security, including counter-terrorism efforts. I will focus my presentation on FTA FTF phenomenon in Europe, exploring Bulgaria as, Bulgaria as a case study. Bulgaria is a European country, a member of the European Union. We are facing similar to other member states' security risks and challenges. Terrorism, proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, organized crime, military or protracted regional conflicts, illegal migration. Foreign terrorist fighters phenomenon as a serious security concern not only for Europe, but for Bulgaria as well. Encountering together with the other member states the same security risks and challenges, we need to consider also some particularities, namely the fact that Bulgaria is an external border of the European Union. We are on, on the way of foreign terrorist fighters traveling to and from Syria and Iraq to Europe. We are taking a huge responsibility to secure not only Bulgarian, but also a part of the EU external border. Further, Bulgaria has one of the largest indigenous Islamic communities in Europe, which brings a potential risk, risk for radicalization. The main concern reported by EU member states is the phenomenon of jihadists traveling to and from conflict zones, which has enhanced the capabilities and the determination of religiously inspired terrorist individuals and groups to perpetuate terrorist attacks in Europe. The EU member states also reported an increase in women and children traveling to the region of conflict. This phenomenon, negative phenomenon, may eventually lead to the emergence of a new generation of jihadist terrorists in Europe. The number of fighters that have returned to the European Union has increased also. In addition, member states' involvement in the anti-ISIS or Al-Qaeda coalition military acti activity is also assessed as increasing the threat, the threat to the European Union. According to, to EU Terrorism Situation and Trend Report 2015, the current scale of the phenomenon foreign terrorist fighters is unprecedented and is growing. Some statistics, I will skip this. The EU policy and analytical documents emphasize that the threat to the European security posed by EU nationals or others 
who have joined terrorist groups as foreign terrorist fighters is represented a compelling reason of self-interest for the EU to increase its engagement in Syria, Iraq and the neighboring country. According to the EU counterterrorism strategy for Syria and Iraq, the key aims are to minimize the risk to Europe and European interests and the threat to regional stability from terrorism emanating from Syria and Iraq and to contribute to the strategic defeat of ISIS, Daesh and al-Nusra Front, including of their violent ideology. Bulgaria as a case study. The security threat for Bulgaria related with the foreign fighters phenomenon need to, needs to be analyzed and evaluated within the context of global terrorism challenges. According to Bulgarian national security strategy, asymmetric threats, especially international terrorism, substantially impact the global and regional security context. Terrorism is a serious threat to global security. Regional conflicts and economic and financial crises further exacerbate the threat. Terrorist organizations have decentralized their structure, diversified their modi operandi, and ap applied infiltrated into democratic society. Bulgaria does not apply an officially introduced graded scale terrorism risk assessment model. However, the current terrorism threat level for Bulgaria could be assessed as moderate, which means that a terrorist attack is possible, but not likely. There is no evidence of concrete plans and intentions of terrorist attacks in Bulgarian territory or against Bulgarian interests and citizens abroad. However, there is a potential terrorist risk due to the following preconditions. The increased terrorist activity worldwide, the participation of Bulgaria in the global coalition to counter the ISIS, the existence of, of, on Bulgarian territory of potential terrorism targets and critical infrastructure vulnerable to such terrorist attacks, a hypothetical possibility of infiltration of, of uh, ter terrorist elements from abroad. You should know that since 2011, there was repeatedly reported increase in the incidence of threat level of terrorism in the country. Hopefully, throughout the country, there have been no actions that could be qualified as terrorism under national and the EU legal framework. However, a high degree of probability suggests that a bomb attack came out at Burgas Sarafovo Airport in July 2012 constitutes a terrorist act. In details, on that date, 18th of July, started near to the bus loaded with terrorists, uh, uh, with tori tourists, a terrorist triggered an improvised explosive device. As a result of the blast, five Israeli and one Bulgarian citizen, citizen, as well as a bomber who was identified later as a French citizen of Lebanese origin, were killed. There is no evidence for connection between this case and foreign fighters or terrorist groups in Syria and Iraq. Recently, there is increasing evidence of the transit of foreign terrorist fighters to Bulgaria. According to the U U.S. Department of State 2014 country reports on terrorism, the foreign fighters threat, together with the continued migration of asylum seekers from Syria to Bulgaria, raised the country counterterrorism profile in 2014. The same trends are relevant in 2015. Presently, the competent national authority do not dispose with enough information based on which the travel of persons residing or passing across the territory of Bulgaria in direction to and from the conflict zones such as Syria, it could be, could be uniquely defi defined as re uh, related to terrorist, terrorism activity. In connection with the conflict in Syria, appeared the phenomenon called foreign terrorist fighters, which is recruiting more and more supporters and represent a huge threat to the international security. Most of these persons are passing through Turkey to reach Syria and Iraq in order to join into the armed conflict. 
The phenomenon, the phenomenon FTF is a problem for Bulgaria to the, the fact, to the fact that our country, country is a EU external border. We are bordering with Turkey, with many of many of the based in Europe foreign terrorist fighters are trying to reach the conflict zones in Syria and Iraq, passing exactly through, through the territory of Bulgaria. Furthermore, that fact creates conditions for the integration of foreign terrorist fighters' networks, builds up their cells on our territory, and makes our country a transit area for the movement of such persons to and from Syria and Iraq. Actually, the new trend of this FTF phenomenon seriously threatening the national security is namely the return process. The successful operations of anti-terrorist coalition against ISIS currently increase the number of foreign fighters who try to, came back, to come back in Europe. As I already mentioned, Turkey remains the main transit hub for travel to and from Syria and Iraq, as well as direct and indirect plane routes. You, would, you travelers from Western Europe also continue to use land routes via countries including Austria, Hungary, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Poland, Croatia, Romania, Serbia, Slovenia, former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia and Bulgaria, and sea ferry routes via Greece and Italy. Frequent, frequent arrests have taken place, place at the Bulgarian-Turkey border crossings. I'm not going in details on the routes, but it's clear. Okay. The return routes for transitional fighters are reported to the similar to their outgoing routes and to be largely non-assisted and insignized, although they may return to the neighboring country's airport. However, on occasion, the use of refugee flows and false documentation has been observed. Using their newly acquired network of contacts, returnees are likewise involved in facilitating aspiring transitional fighters tra transit to conflict areas, also raising money to assist in financing the travel or to support fighting groups. The returnees' motivation could be adaptation problems, terrorist attacks in Europe, vacation between fighting, facilitation network activities, recruitment, attempt to escape from the attacks of the military intervention of the international coalition against ISIS. What is our outlook so far? The travel of European Western fighters to and from Syria and Iraq is mostly like to continue. Europe, including Bulgaria, can be outlined as a possible alternative for direct attacks against the enemies of Islam. Bulgaria, together with Greece and Romania, will continue to constitute transit countries for traveling jihadists from Syria. The Bulgarian government considered the foreign terrorist fighters as a threat to national security. In the short term, there is an increased risk that the, Euro the foreign fighters will return to Europe and conduct terrorist activities. These jihadists are well prepared and have sufficient knowledge of the planning, preparation and execution of attacks in the territory of the EU, including Bulgaria. Even without direct instruction, guidance or support, they have strong enough motivation against the enemies of Islam to enable them to make local attacks. Bulgaria can be added to the enemy range. Jihadist volunteers are capable of implementing their war against the West locally in case that existing jihadist networks are and channels are disrupted. They have stable motivation for attack even without any direct instruction or direct, direct support by concrete terrorist organizations. In the medium and long term, the threat to the national security from foreign fighters is due to the risk then creating operational and log logistical terrorist cells and networks in Bulgaria, Western Balkans, countries as well. As these persons have European do documents and would have an opportunity to travel and reside freely in Bulgaria. Their participation in jihad abroad gives them an opportunity and confidence to inspire, recruit and train new volunteers locally and to build transnational networks.
Other threat is related mostly to the potential destabilization of Muslim communities in Europe under the influence of the radicalized potential of the foreign terrorist fighters veterans. It is a fact that the participation in par paramilitary activities in the conflict zone add to the returning foreign fighters as a specific power of attraction and in general it makes them figures which possess, which possess the possibility to radicalize vulnerable persons and groups. There also exists a risk from provocation of anti-Islamic and xenophobic moves. Bulgaria is a hard European Union country where Muslims are not recent immigrants but a century-old community, mostly ethnic Turkish, descendants of Ottoman rule. Bulgaria has one of the largest Islamic community in Europe. They make up about 20% of the 7 million uh, population. Um, there is also a small Muslim immigrant community that dates back to 1960s, are a Bulgarian student exchange. Bulgaria's largest Muslim community is predominantly moderate and traditional. Though both foreign and uh, Islamic extremists are active in the country, as extremist activities in Bulgaria include Founderizing, logistical support, terrorist operations, and the recruitment of Bulgarian Muslims. Unemployment, weak moderate Islamic institutions, and the history of discrimination enhance the vulnerability of Bulgarian Muslims to extremist, uh, Muslims to extremist exploitation. Regarding the traditional Syrian diaspora, it's, it's considered that Bulgaria is successfully integrated in the society and is not radicalized. The Bulgarian approach to fight against foreign terrorist fighters and against terrorism is general, in general, like the EU counter-terrorism strategy, is focused on the four main pillars, prevent, protect, pursue and respond. Across these pillars, Bulgaria gover Bulgarian government recognized the importance of cooperation with third countries and international institutions. And here something happened. Counterterrorism against... I can't change. Yeah. You need to click on user. Do you pardon? Click on user. You need to click on user. Yeah. Sorry for this. But no problem. Thank you. Countermeasures counter against foreign terrorist fighters include interception and dis disruption of the built networks, channels, individual travels, and possible attack planning. Uh, also, in details, measures are as follows. Detecting pre-departure signals throughout monitoring of the respective diasporas and specific vulnerable groups and individuals. Ident identifying and disrupting the facilitation networks for recruitment and travel movements. Monitoring the returning activities. Actively cooperate with the competent structures on national level. Close international cooperation with other partners. In response to the increasing evidence of the transit of foreign terrorist fighters through the country, the government of Bulgaria has worked to enhance its prevention and informance tools. The Ministry of Interior and the State Agency for National Security have responded strongly to evidence of possible domestic support for ISIS. In November 2014, police arrested a group of Muslim men from Roma communities in the Pazergic area for inciting war and anti-democratic activities. The men are followers of a controversial Imam, Ahmed Musa, who posted pictures out, uh, online of himself and some of his followers wearing clothing and holding a banner imprim imprinted with the ISIS logo. Bulgarian security forces raided more than 40 homes and the mosque in southern Bulgaria to seize books and computers in a special operation aimed to uncover radical Islamist activities. Some 26 people were held for 24 hours and 30 witnesses were questioned during the operation conducted by more than 400 police, police officers, security agents, prosecutors and 
and, this, and investigators. Investigators discover a large number of shirts, shirts, hats, flags, and banners with the logo of the Islamic State. Musa, a former Christian of Roma origin, who converted to Islam in 2000 while working in Vienna, had preached surrounded by the Islamic State flags. The Imam had told his followers to be prepared to fight against Christianity to achieve the ultimate goal of establishing a global caliphate. Musa groups had attempted to recruit fighters for Islamic State and that the crimes in question were committed between July 2014 and November 2014. In its national policy, Bulgaria decisively and consistently regards terrorism as one of the most significant, significant threats to international peace and security. A national plan on combating terrorism main goals is to minimize the terrorist threat by strengthening the cooperation between national and competent authorities. The national plan provides a set of measures focusing on preventing the pro protection from terrorism. The national strategy uh, for the prevention of money laundering pr purpose is focused on the prevention of money laundering and countering the financing of terrorism without a more efficient use of the mechanism for detecting the largest Islamic communities uh, uh, to detect the flow of funds obtained by criminal means and connected to the financing of terrorism. In 2015, a draft national strategy to prevent radicalization and fight against terrorism and an action plan for its implementation were prepared. The strategy lays down the specific risk related to the pre presence of the large number of foreign fighters uh, originating in Europe, including the region of the Western Balkans, which are traveling to participate in the activities of various ext extremist and terrorist formation. This strategy considered the vital importance to establish more close cooperation, not only between governments and law enforcement institutions, but also with civil society, local communities, media, and the, pri and the private sector in order to ensure durable and viable solutions to fight against, to fight against violence, extremism, and radicalization. The contraction to the radicalization is the integration. In coordination with all competent agencies and actors, new legislation to prevent and counter the security challenges related to FTF was, was developed. Bulgaria pro prosecutes suspected terrorists under several general provisions of the Penal Code, but lacks of comprehensive counter-terrorism legal framework is a fact. In 2014, the Minister of Justice introduced a draft amendment of the Penal Code that includes updated counter-terrorism status and aimed to ensure compliance with international standards, including incorporating into national legislation the EU United Nations Security Council Resolution 2178 on terrorist, po terrorist fighters. The draft is under discussion at the National Parliament and should be adopted by the end of this year. Further, a comprehensive framework law on counter-terrorism will be developed in order to provide a legal base for prevention and counter-actions against foreign terrorist fighters. The administrative and operative capacity of the competent institutions and law enforcement agency was threatening. Within the state agency for national security was developed a national counter-terrorism center. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs has designed, designated a counter-terrorism coordinator, ambassador at large for counter-terrorism, who is a key point of contact on issues like foreign terrorist fighters. Uh, I, I like to focus more about on national counter-terrorism center 
it is located in Bulgarian State Agency for National Security. This is the, count, the country's counterintelligence service. Provides the first interministerial standing task force to develop law enforcement sensitive watch lists, coordinate between law enforcement and security services on counterterrorism checks and incidents, and build a common operating picture of the threat to national leadership in facing Bulgaria. The center was to provide coordinated management of national information resources in order to increase the effectiveness of the national system for combating terrorism. The, the, the Ministry of Interior also has operational units which are responsible for detecting and responding to incidents. This includes the speci specialized unit for combating terrorism, security police and special police forces. Specialized law enforcement units are properly equipped and supported with relevant trained but lack of resources in regional areas where the terrorism threat is more highly possible appears strong, strong this problem. International Operational Cooperation uh, Directorate with the Ministry of Interior of Bulgaria used different instruments and tools disrupting the foreign terrorist fighters' travel and activities. Cooperation uh, with our partners with Interpol, Europol, supplementary information request and the National Entry Center, Sirene, and международными организациями и так далее. The influx of asylum, asylum seekers, primarily uh, from Syria, puts a significant strain uh, on law enforcement and operational activities to prevent the foreign страны, terrorist uh, fighters' threats. Uh, the Interior uh, Ministry uh, uh, reassigned scores of local police to the border area to assist the, the border police to, to control the, the, the border. The result has been increased deterrence against illegal border crossings, but significantly less capacity to stay for other law enforcement issues. Bulgaria is supporting the global coalition to counter the Islamic State in Iraq and, uh, and Syria, but he has not taken active military role. Other Bulgaria is a member of and active contributor to counter-terrorism uh, initiatives of the United Nations, European Union, Bulgaria Council of Europe, Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe and NATO. Law enforcement officials benefit from joint investigations and training opportunities uh, which, uh, with international partners. Uh, the active, the active position of the international uh, community, including Bulgaria, partners. for peaceful solve of the Syrian crisis, is it could be used as uh, an argument for attacks on targets of Western countries by different jihadist uh, formations. So, our opinion and assessment is that further efforts are needed uh, in, the, in the direction of asylum seeker management policy improvement, education and specialized training on counter-terrorism, enhancement of the regional cooperation in Eastern Europe and the Western Balkans on the prevention of the foreign terrorist threat, exchange of information and best practices, effective border control management. Our opinion, despite the current political discussions on the European level is, uh, uh, regarding Schengen, is that Bulgaria needs to join Schengen agreement. And uh, in conclusion, I, I would emphasize that terrorists for sure will be defeated by the United Forces of the Anti-Terrorist Coalition, but the terrorist ideology cannot be defeated with weapons. It can be defeated with better ideas. History shows that terrorism has no religion. It can be defeated by societies which believe in human values, people with a high morality with belief, who believe in tolerance and the dialogue with the different can defeat terrorism. Thank you.
Thank you very much indeed, Committee. A very interesting and insightful presentation from a Bulgarian perspective. Again, um, I took a lot from this, as I'm sure you did. Among the issues that uh, I noted down was the fact that Bulgaria, out being on the edge of Europe, is in the front line uh, when the issues of uh, returning foreign fighters and uh, refugees and possible jihadists trying to sneak back into Europe is concerned. Therefore, it has a critical role to perform. Once again, I'm glad you raised the issue of women and children and the fears that uh, we could be facing in the future uh, and, and even yet another new generation of jihadis uh, who have been indoctrinated from the very beginning uh, in the Islamic State and are particularly jihadists. Uh, you made a good point, I think, about the fact that Bulgaria faces only a moderate threat from actual terrorism. But again, the attack which you referred to in 2012 reminds, I think, all of us that there are no grounds at all for complacency. And indeed, uh, you also pointed out that a country like Bulgaria that doesn't have direct uh, threat from terrorism can act as a logistical hub. Uh, even uh, 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 a potential safe haven for terrorists uh, uh, plotting attacks uh, in uh, neighboring countries. Um, um, I was uh, interested to hear that you mentioned the Roma. Uh, uh, I've heard this uh, as well from other um, Balkan uh, security uh, specialists. Roma, Roma as a disadvantaged community, uh, seemed ripe for conversion to uh, um, extremism. Условиях, and you're not the first uh, 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 Balkan analyst to, 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 to raise that particular point. Um, 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 again, you made good points. Um, on the uh, uh, what we need to, to do to deal with this, the importance of integration, the importance of having an effective legal framework, and above all, the, um, the need for cooperation uh, and to share best practices. So thank you once again, Committee. <laughs> And last but not least this morning, <laughs> we have a major Esmeral Salieri. Did I get that nearly right? I'll okay. try to do my best. <laughs> um, major Salieri is a um, military intelligence, office, uh, intelligence officer working in the um, general staff. Um, he's worked in a very wide range of different strategic roles as an intelligence officer. Um, he's currently um, participated in various events specializing in of course, uh, counter-terrorism. Um, so, Esmeralda, the floor is yours. Incidentally, he was a graduate of PTSS 12-3. So. Он выпускник нашего курса ПТВБ 12 -го года. Thank you very much, sir. Большое спасибо, сэр. Dear Professor Howcroft, Dear Marshall Center professors and members, sirs, ladies and gentlemen, Albania as a NATO member and your candidate country is walking towards EU accession by addressing development challenges and strengthening the rule of law, contributing to enhanced regional cooperation in line with the European values. Religious harmony has been broadly recognized as a core societal value in Albania, where members of Muslim, Catholic, Orthodox and other religious communities have coexisted in peace. Over the past few years, especially with the further escalation of Syrian conflict, the public debate in Albania has been exposed to concepts such as religious radicalization and violent extremism. Different reports and research studies have confirmed so far the presence of the Albanian citizens in the Syrian war. Fighting along the terrorist groups. Well, it's my intention to give you a landscape on foreign terrorist fight phenomenon and an examination of radicalization process, facilitating factors, key challenges, and best practices identified so far in Albania regarding such a phenomenon. Before going through the agenda, I would like to forward these quick administrative remarks, and these are only mine. Uh, it's, it's my point of view regarding this phenomenon, not the official. But anyway, just to be in the, in the line of, of the, uh, let's say, oh. 
This will be the agenda. Вот так выглядит so план моего выступления. В течение нескольких секунд предлагаю вам ознакомиться с этим. I will be concentrating Albanian perspective on phenomenon and explain how the Albanian authorities approach to this problem. And of course, give you some, let's say, recommendations or key takeaways if those will be helpful for for your domains. But first, let's start with the nature of the foreign terrorist threats uh, in Albania. With a further escalation of conflict in Syria and Iraq, there is a confirmed presence of the Albanian citizens fighting along extremist groups in Iraq and Syria. For the moment, it is unclear how many Albanian fighters are present. However, we have a different national and international sources that uh, estimates approximately 90 приблизительно 90 человек, Сирии, которые в настоящее время воюют в Сирии и Ираке. The concern exposed by the foreign fighters terrorism is that as they return home, they also bring their combat experience and deep radicalization. Most of the foreign fighters from Albania appear to have decided to travel almost entirely on their own accord. They are further introduced in radicalized circles, which appear to use the various tactics, techniques and procedures in order to attract more These supporters are then selected and upon their own accord decide to travel to Syria and Iraq. Of course, there are multiple factors which influence the entire process, starting from attraction, selection, radicalization, traveling and theater of operation in processing. Throughout the entire process, we have to point out that the social media has this galvanizing effect on people who want to join the crisis. In Albania, of course, we have a really big internet penetration, and it's estimated the same as the other European countries. However, nowadays the internet is double-edged sword. Of course, it is useful for state authorities to use to track individuals who are willing to join with the ISIS or the followers who are, let's say, supporting the ISIS ideology. But at the other hand, these groups use the internet as a really facilitator for attracting supporters and as well giving their message out to the world. The ISIS online propaganda currently is something unprecedented. This is all part of high-tech propaganda machine that ISIS uses to reach out to potential recruiters. ISIS propaganda videos have also penetrated the Balkans, and judging by the number of foreign fighters, ISIS seems at some point that has been successful. As my colleague from Macedonia pointed out, the the whole impact what the internet or social media had on the, on the activities or support, uh, activities of a supporter of ISIS in Balkans and uh, their activities in, in Syria. While the internet propaganda tools certainly do facilitate the recruitment of efforts and other instruments used by recruiting networks, one cannot rule out that in many cases it could be a much more effective recruitment tool than the physical contact in, let's say, uh, such, such domain or physical domain like uh, mosques or having contacts with the radi radical imams or other private spaces which uh, these uh, idol ideologues uh, use for in order to, let's say, attract supporters. First, I, I want to give you 
some elements which facilitate the phenomenon in the early, early stage of opinion. Uh, first of all, uh, starting from the influence that uh, non-traditional religious culture had impacted our environment in Albania. Normally, in Albania, it's, the, let's say, a traditional Muslim culture, which is let's say respecting the national culture, but however a more moderated approach toward the, the, let's say, the, the religion. The influence from non-traditional religious culture was a subject of concern in Albania before this was addressed, especially after 9-11. Following a long period of state hostility towards the religious community, under communist rule, uh, the early 90s challenge of restoring religious institutions and building communities of believers was immense. Not only the missing infrastructure and property disputes over existing one, but also lack of education institutions and religious personnel posed major difficulties in this part. Faced with severe economic problems and social challenges of the transition period, restoring the religious believer was a challenge in itself for Albania. On the other hand, already fragile efforts on democratization process, institutional building, and rule of law immediately after the fall of communism were additionally hit by the Albanian 1997 social unrest which kept the state a weak player in helping to address religious institutions, challenges throughout the 90s. During this time, radical, a radicalized element introduced within the religious community. Some minor and isolated events by mid-90s were uh, already signaling the influence coming from certain foreign religious centers, while continuing to struggle with some so-called Salafi uh, centers. Uh, to some points, elements from other countries and under the cover of humanitarian agencies uh, were introduced in the religious circles in Albania with the aim of influencing in the religious system with the universal tool, the money. With having no proper abilities and resources in informal and non-oversighted religious institution, institutions appeared unable to struggle with this phenomenon. As a dominant religious community in the country, challenges and needs of the Albanian Islamic community were and understandably huger. Consequently, many foreign organizations, religious and humanitarian foundations and other actors entered the scene in the early 90s to help religious institutions restore their respective communities of believers, build infrastructures or provide education for a new generation of religious clerics, mostly abroad. And uh, of uh, course, the uh, 1998-1999 conflict in Kosovo uh, and with the Kosovo uh, migration crisis, Kosovo, we had that influx of these foreign приток, religion communities uh, and under the cover of uh, doing uh, humanitarian uh, actions uh, and of course, uh, they bringing uh, together, uh, uh, let's say, uh, their the aim and objective to influence the traditional religious culture in Albania as well as As Albania was still struggling to overcome its weak state status, foreign religious organizations remained out of any monitoring or vetting process. This, of course, make possible for this uh, organization uh, to build their own strategies and objectives in order to influence more radical uh, approach toward religions in Albania. Of course, the other problem was the isol uh, isolation of certain social groups, which led, of course, to another stage of radicalization process. The isolation gave these groups the justification to be self-victimized, -victim and using it 
for far-reaching objectives, such as increasing the group, their supporters, recruiters, and individuals willing to set to another stage of radicalism and later to violent, extreme, uh, violent extremism. Of course, we, at the beginning, we have also uh, problems with uh, cross-relation between governmental which include, uh, of course, non-intelligence and law enforcement and uh, religious community. And also, we have a lack of the counter-narrative programs in order to mitigate such a problem. Before the phenomenon was brought in attention, there was a lack of counter-narrative programs, which is really important to stress According, accordingly, a law enforcement agency has been the main and the only uh, players on the side of state authorities to counter violent extremism and the religious radicalism. Over this period, before the phenomenon was brought into surface, too little or let's say almost known actions uh, have been undertaken on the prevention side also, uh, uh, before uh, this, this phenomenon would bring to our attention. <coughs> of course, civil society discourse and activity on challenges over radicalization on violent extremists based on religious ideologies have been an exception rather than a conventional focus. Overall efforts by state and non-state actors were a mere marketing of countries religious army and far from a structured approach to understand and proactively, uh, proactively uh, actively support factors that enabled this value. This is a, a picture de depicting a uh, process starting from the uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, or what were the potential factors which uh, uh, let's say, enabled uh, radicalism and, of course, later uh, violent extremism. We have the three main domains which, let's say, influenced so far, influenced so far the, the, the Albanian domains of radicals and violent, violent extremists. And those are coming from socio and economical factors. Uh, we have a research study that showed that uh, most of the people who were recruited come from the remote areas and they are having a really a bad economical situation. Of course, the cultural, this depends also by the education system, what these people have followed. And the gaps in between this education. This makes possible, of course, to have that kind of say, approach toward the religions. And, of course, the political side. Uh, during the time that we had that, that empty uh, uh, space or uh, no efforts or the state what was not able to mitigate the threats. In that time, we had a lot of uh, religious institutions, informal, informal religious, uh, religious institutions, we had the gaps on vetting and uh, controlling uh, the, uh, a lot of, of uh, religious institutions. And these factors correlating with each other and make possible an environment where a lot of uh, people with uh, more oriented Почему radical ideas joined mm -hmm. with the violent extremists uh, in Syria and Iraq. This is a process uh, showing extremists. the overall, uh, let's process. say, structure uh, uh, how the people joined uh, to, to the, to the groups in, in Syria and Iraq. As you see, we have a pushing factors starting from political, cultural, and socio-economical, which targeted the audience, the most vulnerable audience. And this audience further was introduced in uh, radicalization and recruiting networks, which with their tactic, techniques, and procedures made them possible and, of course, offered them, uh, let's say, 
their support, logistical support and everything in order to make them possible to attract and then to, uh, let's say, allow them to go to the Syria and Iraq. Of course, there is a really broader range of the facilitators and enablers in this process. But the main point is that the, uh, let's say, the ideology is, is a fundamental in, 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 in the, the overall process. Now we come to our, let's say, approach to the problem. Uh, Albania's response to such phenomena has far developed mostly through repressive measures with the immediate impact outside the national uh, borders. Examples of such measures include amendments of, uh, to the criminal code to allow for the prosecution of individuals participating in armed conflicts abroad, intensification of intelligence and police cooperation with law enforcement agencies in the region. Of course, prosecution of a number of individuals recruiting an Albanian citizen to join the Syrian conflict and other measures. So far, we have ongoing process uh, regarding the imams which were dealing with the recruiting. And so far, they managed to, to recruit and to send to Syria and Iraq from eight to 10 people. This was the first major uh, operations in Albania and then uh, followed other operations and also to include the joint operations, especially with the Italy and other neighboring countries. Of course, now we maintain a really close cooperation with the neighboring country, especially with Kosovo, which we have a really, uh, let's say, um, with, a, with a practical uh, results and, and on, on, on the ground. The cross levels and cross domains efforts. After recognizing the challenges posed by the phenomenon, a huge efforts were pushed on different organizational levels, especially by those of intelligence and law enforcement. This allowed the proper interaction of these organizations. In terms of action, the information was best shared and analyzed and processed further within the law enforcement circles. Another pillar of our approach to problem is the foreign relationships and diplomacy, which is of significant importance, especially by creating the possible environment for cooperation interaction with international entities and organizations. At different occasions, these efforts were finalized with memorandum of understandings at political and operational level as well as joint operations made between countries, Albania and other third countries. As well as Albania took a cooperative stance by offering military assistance and being willing to engage with its modest military capabilities and operations. This goes under the NATO uh, umbrella. And the second, we had this uh, uh, offered military assistance to the opposing force of, uh, against the ISIS and on the, on the ground. This was made uh, possibly by uh, giving them a range of uh, materials, logistical and uh, weaponry to, to these groups on the, on the ground. The last but not least, the Albanian authorities expanded the key leader engagement. That is really important and especially Nowadays, we are having a really high, uh, let's say, activities on engaging the key leaders, especially from our religious communities. That is including also our prime minister, which is by himself uh, having this, uh, these engagements. This was it, it, it intensified lately, engaging the very highest level also to other entities within the government. Uh, of course, uh, during this engagement, we bring in uh, high-profile events, uh, workshops, seminars, international events, and other programs. Uh, we bring this religious community uh, from the whole levels, from down to, to top. Of course, a key, key leaders engagement make possible that phenomenon was addressed in whole from top-down levels 
uh, of politics, social and other influencing factors. Of course, intelligence and the law enforcement engaged with the religious communities in order to take that really good information and insight what's going on uh, within the religious domain. We have, uh, we had and we have again key challenges. First of all, is the ability to anticipate and identify possible individuals willing to join the radical networks is one of the key challenges because of the limited resources and capabilities, especially to the intelligence and law enforcement, of course. The radicalized individuals returning back home pose a great potential threat to the security. The latest events in Paris give a huge significance over the risk from individuals who had contact with extremist elements and uh, acted in the let's say in the, these uh, areas. Other risk associated to their abilities and gained in their area of, of, of operations are related to their, let's say, other uh, skills, uh, and especially for the infops and psyops uh, related. Of course, other problem is sharing of the information real and near real time. This is dependent on state capabilities and access to related technology. By implementing a communication technologies which have abilities to access multiple databases in a short time make possible the sharing of information in real and near real time. But with the lack of these resources and capabilities, the sharing time will be challenged in such a level that the information will lose the value and coherence. Now we have some problems with this also in Albania and uh, the government is trying to address this problem by introducing a new systems uh, supporting the databases and these databases will be connected with the wider uh, let's say providers and consumers within and outside the border of Albania but the problem still remain with financial and Additionally, the sharing of information fosters as well as a relation and put an emphasis in coordination of different agencies and entities for specific topic interest. The improving systems and technology, especially the biometrics at the borders. And nowadays with the refugee uh, uh, influx uh, toward Balkans, it's really immediate to immediate uh, uh, need the introducing further uh, further expanding as far as i know a lot of countries in in uh, balkans area they pose these uh, capabilities but we have to expand and we have to connect them in between the countries so we can share the information especially for identifying individuals who already are traveling in the from Syria and, uh, to Syria and Iraq and from Syria uh, uh, to Iraq toward the European countries. Of course, the conflict between intelligence and law enforcement and counter narrative programs. This should be, let's say, in full relationships in between each other. We have an intelligence side, which have a huge information, but from the law enforcement perspective, that information doesn't make any sense. And the overall, we have this conflicting behavior between intelligence. Uh, however, uh, this is another challenge that we have to uh, Some best Practices identified, of course, identify gaps and assess opportunities within legal framework. That is a really first step that everybody should do. And we did so far in Albania, and we had a really good results. So far, we have two years that we are not having reports that people are traveling from Albania to uh, Syria and Iraq. Increasing of sharing of information, which is a vital role, of course, to identify and to prevent individuals 
and other preventive activities which are related to counter-narratives program, especially to this social and education system. And of course, we have to have a comprehensive understanding of characteristic and other features of individuals, groups, and communities. This we, we do always in our intelligence community in order to uh, have a full understanding of this. And of course, we have to have a comprehensive understanding of the ideology in itself, because of always we're having this misunderstanding and misinterpretation of the ideology. So far, we have this key, key leaders engagement and also other programs which we're having uh, for uh, let's say narrow, narrowing these gaps and of course we having uh, let the opportunity to the religious community to ha to express themselves in, in, in the wider in media in communities and other this is uh, let's say one of our main topic the uh, religions coherent or uh, coexistence in Albania uh, this is uh, let's say picture from the uh, demonstration in uh, regard to Charlie Hedbo events in Paris. Our Prime Minister with uh, four, uh, four main religious community leader uh, walking together and this shows that really value of the Albania in itself, what, what, how we, uh, let's say, having an interaction between religions and this is a really good factor which you have to, let's say, try, I don't know, in your domains but in Albania so far acted really good and of course these are some recommendations of course the increasing of awareness maintaining social cohesion and religious harmony enhanced cooperation of course public awareness which is a really important uh, in let's say having this awareness regarding the problems and other uh, uh, religious uh, radicalization uh, process and also information and intelligence sharing. And this concludes my slides. Thank you very much for your attention and hope that